that some people say some people are here for a reason, and you never know what that reason is. Like my mother and father, they a the whole reason in life might have been just to meet them, have me. You know what I mean? Somebody can build a, this house of blues just for us to have this moment right now. It's gonna be our great thing. You know what I mean? So you never know what moments it is when people meet. Bugs definitely is the spirit of D12 that kept us moving and going. So that, that was it. That guy, I miss him, he died. They ask me, am I okay? They ask me if I'm happy. Are they asking me that because of the shit that's been thrown at me? Or am I just a little snappy and they genuinely care? Doobie, most of my life it's just been me and you there. And I continuously stare staring pictures of you. I never got to say I love you as much as I wanted to, but I do. Yeah, I say it now when you can't hear me. What the fuck good does that do me now? But somehow I know you're near me in presence. Oh, I went and dropped some presents off the east to them. Jail. You know, it's amazing how just one day in jail can seem like a week. I mean, finding yourself in jail or arrested or incarcerated, it strips you from reality for a moment and it sets you back. And that's just what happened in this beef with Royce the 5'9 and D12 and Eminem and Proof here in part six of this series. You know, they found themselves between Eminem and Proof and Royce, they found themselves arrested during this time. Some of them multiple times. And you know, jail has a way of taking you away from the reality of your family, the reality of your job and everything that you were working for, even one day. And that's just what, and that's just what it did for Detroit back then. I mean, this particular beef, it not only set their lives back, but Detroit as a whole, Detroit as a rap scene and hip hop scene, it set them back on how outsiders and people viewed the rap scene. And this may sound a little strange, but I'ma tell it I found a jacket that you left in my wedding I picked it up to smell it I wrapped it up in plastic until I put it in glass And hang it up in the hallway so I can always look at it And as for all of me in these 12, we feel like fuck rat Who feels like a general just fucking died in our lap We shut off all the pages, all the cell numbers are changed Our two ways are in the trash of some cats I'll have to find a new way Hey, what is up there guys and welcome back to a, another episode and part 6 of the beef between Royce the 5'9 and D12 and Proof and Eminem. If you haven't seen parts 1 through 5, I suggest you take a look in the comments and definitely check out those as we're going to be continuing to go on because I must say that I must say that here in part six, this is probably going to be the most intense, the most intense and spirit shattering um, part till date. You see, because where we la last left off in this beef and in this series, Royce have put out Malcolm X against D12 after D12 had jumped his boy in the street and met up with him and took his shoes. And Royce had threatened D12 members and after Royce had put out that dynamic, that dynamic Malcolm X, that diss track on every member of D12, including M, then proof he tried to come back in part five with a this track but it didn't really have the caliber to match up with Malcolm X so now we're at a point where tensions are high and you got to understand that the Detroit rap scene that it was different back then than what it is now I mean because you can you can diss people now here in 2020 and 
it works out. It works out for your pocket. It works out for the label. I mean, but back then, you know, beefs like this, it put a stain. It put a stain on the very career of not just individuals, but the hip hop scene because it was just growing. And that's just what this beef did. So, so now we're at a point where Proof, he had just tried to come back and release a diss track back on Royce because of Malcolm X. Now you may ask why Proof, you know, well, Proof mentality, you know, the reason why Proof got in so much trouble because out of all the members of D12, Proof was, he had that mentality and he had that leadership. I mean, Proof, you know, because he was so vocal and loud mouth and probably the smallest of the group, I can remember Proof once saying that I'm a small dude with big teeth, but they have never got knocked out. <laughs> so Proof, Proof, he had a, he was a big talker and he walked the walk also. I mean, that's why he gave, he gained so much respect and not just Detroit, but in the underground and in D12. So he was seen as the leader of D12, or as Eminem called them, the general. Proof is my papa, the showstopper, no rapper. You see what I'm saying? Trying to stop something papa. Peace. But y'all got that. You can't rewind that. You got to rewind that, baby. So after Proof put out his diss track back on Royce the 5'9", you know, Royce kind of laughed at it. It didn't have the caliber to match up with it. And then rumors start spreading. I mean, rumors throughout this beef because this beef was so big, you know, back in Detroit. I mean, it was publicized massively. I mean, rumors start coming out that got back to Royce and it got back to Proof. I mean, Royce... I mean, Proof had heard that Royce had put out a hit on Proof that he is trying to hire Hitman and he has um, put out a hit and basically told his crew members that anyone that takes out, you know, Proof is going to get such and such amount of money. And then Royce was hearing that Proof, that Proof is trying, Proof and um, Eminem, and D12 was trying to get him kicked off the label and they were trying to sabotage him. So there was so many room, rumors that both sides were hearing that proof had got to the point where, you know what, let's just handle this. Let's just settle this because up until now, they have not seen each other. So proof had decided that he was going to meet up with Royce once and for all head to head and they were going to settle it. So Proof got all his group members because he knew that Royce was going to be rolling deep. Now Proof was smart and Proof being a long time friend of Royce, he knew Royce's birth date and he knew that Royce liked to party on his birthday and he knew exactly where Royce was going to be downtown and just the spot that he was going to party at. So Royce, the f so Proof decided to confront Royce right on his birthday, rolling with a bunch of people. And he knew that since it was his birthday, that Roy, um, Royce is going to have a bunch of his people there too. Now, before I get into this meeting, up, I want to talk about a little bit about Royce and Proof relationship because these two, even before Eminem, they had a relationship. I mean, they would take their kids to Chuck E. Cheese's together and also... So Royce spoke of a time where, um, you know, some of his greatest memories of Proof is when, you know, Proof used to come over to his grandmom's house and, you know, he used to hit record on the Maxwell tape and record them as he's rapping so that they can get duplicates so that he can get a copy. So these two were friends well before even him and Marshall. Now, Royce, the reason why things got so this beef really got ignited because of the fact that Royce didn't really know anyone in D12 besides besides Proof and Marshall. Now he had heard of Bizarre and knew Bizarre just little because actually Bizarre had because actually Bizarre he had actually battled rap battled Royce the 5'9's 
um, brother in a high school earlier. So he knew of Bizarre, but everybody else, he didn't really care for. And it was easy for him and D12 to come at them because they didn't know Royce and Royce didn't know them. So it was so easy for the fire to really go. You know, in that, you know, in, you know, in that intro song by Eminem that you heard playing, um, it was a song called Difficult. Now, in this song, Eminem had said, you know, if I ever see him again, you know, I'm going to punch him in the face. Now, a lot of people, you know, back then they had thought that this was talking about Royce, but, you know, in this song, he wasn't actually talking about Royce. He was talking about another member, a former member of D12 um, named Fuzz. And, um, you know, <laughs> uh, back then, um, kind of what happened with Fuzz is that, well, I think it started when Eminem had got arrested. Let's talk about that um, right now because um, Fuzz, Eminem, and proof you know they decided one day that they were going to go out and they were going to take a joy ride they had these paintball guns and they were going through the neighborhoods and they were literally shooting i mean paintballs are they were shooting hookers and they were shooting you know uh bums and poor people and homeless people on the street you know they were actually <laughs> you know proof once said that you know they were cleaning up the streets from the bums and the hookers and whatnot proof proof had actually got mad at a um proof had actually got mad at a hooker prior um you know some stuff happened he don't say too much about it but proof had got mad and then eminem had suggested yeah let's go the streets and let's go shoot some hookers and so they went the streets and they were just shooting hookers and bums and homeless people on the side of the road now they end up getting arrested um, this was uh, one of Eminem's first and biggest case and you know they end up getting arrested proof you know all of them you know proof and Eminem they get arrested um, and why they're in jail you know Eminem said that you know they were kind of laughing at the whole situation but it turned out not to be a laughing matter because you know the prosecution was asking um, them to uh, face they were uh, facing five years in jail you know so that's what the prosecution was asked. So they go to court um, and Eminem and Proof. So it wasn't a laughing matter now. You know, they were sweating. They were sweating and they were super scared. You know, five years, they were just really just starting. So um, it turns out that uh, the hookers and nobody end up showing up to testify to it. So they end up getting off on that. They end up beating that. But well, that could have really, I mean, you could have, you guys could have not had the Eminem and the Marshall Mathers or any of this. I mean, the whole Detroit rap scene could have been changed, you know, just by if a hooker would have, would have, would have testified that day in court, things could have changed forever. We had that arrest, but now let's get back to the beef that is circulating this part six of this. And that is proof deciding to meet up with Royce and deciding let's handle this let's settle this and it is what it is now to be fair proof had came up you know proof wanted to meet up with them not so much not so he wanted to meet up with them in peace but he was ready for conflict hence the 13 um boys that he uh gathered so they meet up downtown and they go looking for Royce. He checked uh, He checked the first spot that he found and nothing. He checked the second spot and then they start walking and proof is like he would definitely be here. This is his birthday. This is the last space. So as they were walking, he walked around the corner and lo and behold, they meet up with Royce. So now there's a standoff and things are about to get really crazy and it's about to get really serious quick you got Royce and you've got Proof you got both of their squads and both of them are rolling deep and you got the two leaders talking so Royce Royce see them coming around the corner and Proof he starts off hey yo Royce what up Ro Proof's boys is backing him they're hyping up and intensifying the situation. 
Royce boys, you know, they step up, they get on the defense, and they're ready for war. Royce is like, what up with you? So Proof just calmly respond, I heard you was trying to do some stuff. What it is though? Royce, Re Royce respond with his crew in the back backing him, it is what it is. Proof said, what you trying to do? You talked a lot of yin yang stuff in that Malcolm X, what it is. Royce said, I ain't even moving like that right now. So someone from Proof's side remind him that Royce had put out a hit on him. So Proof said, so Proof is like, yo, so, what it, so what's up with the hit you trying to put out on me? And then Royce is like, come on, we ain't even been talking like that for me to want to try to kill you. So things start, so things start, so things start intensifying because Royce now looks at, so now Royce, he now looks at Proof and he see that Proof got his hands on his gun. And so Royce is like, why are you holding your banger? What you trying to do? And then Royce pulls out his and he points it at Proof and he's like, I got one too. So now Proof is like, yo, yo, hold up, I got this. So now Proof brings out his, so now he's pointing at, so now he's pointing at Royce and he's like, well, I got something for you too. What you trying to do? So now both crowds and both boys, they're hyping up the situation. So finally Proof being the level head, he was like, we ain't even got to do this because neither one of these, see, these boys were best friends at the time. So now they are at the break. They are at the precipice. They are at the end of about to kill and shoot and blast each other's head off right now. Both are pointing guns at each other. So finally proof, he put his gun down. Royce, he didn't put his gun down. And they both decide to go off on the side and let's just talk it out away from both, both crew members. So that's what both of them do. They proof and Royce, they go to the side and they're still a stand standoff between the two groups. You got Royce group looking at them and Proof group looking at them while these two are off on the side. And I actually, they're talking. They're talking for the first time. They're communicating. You know, Proof is telling Royce about some things that he heard and Royce is like, nah, that wasn't true. Royce is talking to Proof about some things that he had heard and Proof is like, nah, it ain't even go down like that. So they start communicating and then the police shows up while they're talking. Both groups and both yes men's, they run, they run, they scatter, they get out of there. And Royce and Proof, they end up getting arrested, you know, because of the whole gun thing. They were the ones that pulled out guns. So they get in jail. So now you got Proof and Royce, they both in jail. They're sitting outside of the cell from one another. And you know, they're talking. And they're in this jail and Proof is like, yo, I'm like 26 years old, we're young. And we are in here with all these felonies. We ain't doing nothing for Detroit rap scene. You gotta think, how are people, how are people and the other outsiders on the coast, the other rap scene, looking at Detroit right, right now. We can't make it out because we fighting amongst ourselves. Royce agreed. We gotta stop this, this is nonsense. We shouldn't be in here. And you know, it was at, and you know, it was during that jail conversation a lot more and a lot more was exposed as being lied, as being capped and just the public just intensifying things. So they came to an agreement that, you know, this ain't it. So it was at that time that they decided and they came to a truce. You know, Proof went back, you know, after they got out, you know, Proof went back to D12 and let them know, nah, we're cool. We're cool with Royce. We came to a truce and Royce went back and let his crew know the same. Um, and that's kind of how part six ends because it ends 
with the truce happening between D12. And later on, Proof goes on, Proof and Royce, he goes on tour with D12. But you know who wasn't quite feeling it? Eminem. Eminem still felt a certain way, although they had handled their stuff. Um, Eminem was still not yet talking to Proof. I mean, still not talking to Royce. And there was a reason for it. And there was a reason why Eminem had separated himself from D12. Because you remember in Difficult, um, I talked about Fuzz. Um, Well, D12 had still mend and rekindled the relationship with Fuzz also. And Eminem wasn't feeling him. So that could be another one of the reasons why, you know, during that time span that Eminem wasn't doing much with D12. But for now, here in part six, you know, things are kind of back together. Things are kind of back together with D12. But it took something unfortunate um, for things to get back together with Eminem and Royce and D12. And that's for part seven, when we go over the death of Proof, when we go over his case, when we go over kind of what happened and how it all ended and what D12 did did from there and how Royce found himself in jail for a year and how a sad Eminem spoke at a funeral and so much more in part seven. Guys, if you haven't seen parts one through five, that is going to conclude part six. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a long one. Um, Please support the channel, man. Support the channel. Support, you know, the series. Uh, Show your support. Um, As always, KIP. I'll see you guys in the next video. And I continue with the staring pictures of you I never got to say I love you as much as I wanted to But I do, yeah, I say it now when you can't hear me What the fuck good does that do me now? But somehow I know you need me a present Oh, I went and dropped some presents off the Easter to them Two little beautiful boys of yours to try to ease the Mine's a little and dog, you never believe this But Sharonda, taxi talks to me now Jesus and everyone else is just trying to pick up the pieces Man, how could you touch so many fucking lives and just leave us? They say grievance has its way of infecting everyone different if it's true How the fuck I'm supposed to get over you? Difficult to sense. 